And what are you seeing from your son that suggests to you that there's a problem at all? What are we seeing? What is he saying? What is he doing? Why do you think there's a problem? He does not seem to want to be around young boys his age. He wants to see them. He, he wants to be around like third graders. And like he, he wants to hang out with them. Or like if it is his age, it want, he wants it to be a girl. I feel like he should be around little boys that experience the same thing as him being a you know, okay, you know, I, 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 I follow you, but let me say this. Um, if he is a very gentle child, gentle, okay, he will shy away from aggressive children. And that in and of itself is not a bad thing, not in and of itself. Also, if for whatever he's been through in life, if he didn't get something at an earlier stage of psychological development, he could be trapped there. So if your son is 10 and he likes to play with children who are six, I'm wondering what happened in life when he was six or seven that has him trapped at that developmental stage where he still wants to socialize with six and seven year olds. In other words, that could have absolutely nothing to do with the classroom he's in. That could have everything to do with certain experiences he had when he was the age of the children he prefers to have as playmates. Do you follow what I'm saying? Yes. So we got to look at that both ways. It could be a classroom thing, but that sounds more like psychological development that is beyond the classroom. Here's what you need to do, though. You and his father got divorced when he was six. Exactly. Yes. And so for him, that was traumatic. And then I'm also wondering if that was really the last time he really spent quality time with his biological father. Because if it was, that could also help explain this. Let's take Michael Jackson. Right. Whose birthday we will celebrate on August the 29th. The greatest who ever did it. Michael Jackson was abused as a child. It didn't matter how old Michael Jackson got. He still functioned like a seven and eight year old. You know why? That was the last time he can remember being allowed to be a child. It was the last time where he probably felt some sort of genuine happiness it was the last time he would live his life without people trying to take advantage of him, exploit him, and force him to grow up before his time. Your son may be experiencing something like that as well. I recommend that you get him a couple sessions of therapy. Uh, if you text me tomorrow, I should be able to dig up a therapist for you in the Atlanta area. I think your son needs to talk with somebody. That's number one. Number two... I think that you need to enroll him in some sort of structured extracurricular activity outside of that school where you know that he's going to be around heterosexual boys and heterosexual men. I don't care if it's chess. I don't care if it's robotics. I don't care if it's just a mentorship program at the local church. It doesn't have to be athletics. If your son isn't into athletics, he don't have to be into athletics. But I want you to get him into something where he's around men and boys. Something that is not stereotypically masculine like football and basketball because I don't think your son is ready for that. Get him in something around men and boys that is progressive and structured outside of school. Because I also think he's spending too much time up under you. And if he stays under you all the time, he'll never develop the skills he needs to navigate social life, social life as a young black boy. Do you feel me? I absolutely. And the last piece I want to give you is be very careful about who you allow your son to be around. Because if he is a gentle spirit, I'm not saying effeminate. I'm saying gentle. Okay. Because at that age, he ain't at the age yet where he's sexually attracted to anybody. So homosexuality is out of the question anyway. Mm -hmm. However... Because they're pushing that transgender stuff and that gay stuff in the schools 
on our children. And you're in Atlanta, which is the Mecca for that agenda. Atlanta is the Mecca for that agenda. You have to protect your son. You cannot have him anywhere where you don't know the men involved. You can't have him for no long amount of time around anybody unless you can absolutely trust them with your life. Because I would hate for that young man to end up around boys who are predators, sexual predators, and they end up manipulating him into an experience that later on has him questioning his gender identity. So you got to be extra careful with him because he's a gentle soul. Okay. You feel me? But uh, get we got to get him some therapy and we got to get him in an extracurricular activity. That Those two things are primary. When is the next time he will see his biological father face to face? Christmas. He Christmas. only sees him twice a year. He only sees him twice a year living in Atlanta. His, uh, his, his father, so we moved to Atlanta because in North Carolina I had no support. I had nobody. And so here his, his father's family and parents live okay that's understandable totally understandable my queen but keep your arms wrap around him keep you keep you know keep him close to you keep him close because you are living in a predatory society down there and we can't let nobody get to him we got to keep him escorted and protected if you have a question about the babies we are only talking about the babies. If you have a question about the babies, text your first name in your city to 215-989-9858. Go right ahead with your question, beautiful. Um, yeah, so um, my daughter, she's um, four years old. She just started pre-K this year. And um, she just acts out. She don't speak well, but when she's around her family, like, me, her dad, her um, her auntie, her grandma. She talks with words and you know asks questions and stuff like that. But her teachers say she be flipping out, she be kicking, doing stuff. She don't listen. So I'm just trying to see like, um, what is the problem with her? You know, what? Is, um, I never experienced it. This is my first child, so. I'm just trying to see from your experience, what should I do to help her in pre-K? Well, number one, this could simply be a natural problem of separation from caregiver when it's time to go to preschool. Unfortunately, sometimes we don't prepare our children with enough advanced time for, you know, being separate from us. You have to slowly wean the child off of the parent and a lot of times our children will go from being around their parents 24 hours a day seven days a week and then the very next day they at a daycare center for seven hours a day and that's very traumatizing so what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to start preparing them for that separation from caregiver by taking them places leaving them for 30 minutes an hour two hours getting them used to not being around us because this could be an attachment separation issue. She may not have had enough time away from you guys. And so she's flipping out because this is traumatizing because it's completely new to her. So that could be one aspect of this. The other aspect of this could simply be that she's spoiled and she's used to doing what she wants when she wants to do it. OK, we got to consider that part. And then the third piece, which is when you're looking at a dysfunctional attachment relationship, and that's when the child is afraid to leave the parent when they get dropped off at preschool because they don't spend a lot of time with that parent. So for example, imagine a kid who gets dropped off and instead of the mother coming to pick them up, it might be the aunt, it might be the cousin, it might be the next door neighbor. They may not see mom for a day or two. I'm sure that's not the situation with you, but a lot of times when children know when mommy drops me off, I might not see mommy the rest of the week. I might not see mommy the rest of the day. I might not see mommy for the next two days. So if it is a dysfunctional attachment relationship where a child isn't sure they're going to see their parent for a long time after getting dropped off, that could also explain that. But I think 
the first scenario is probably the most likely because it's the most common and that is a child who has not been prepared to be separate from the caregiver. I think y'all need to put her on a behavior plan at home where if she's able to control herself when she gets to preschool and if she performs well at preschool, when she comes home, the preschool teacher communicates that to you. You review the day with her, you get a calendar, hang it up on her door, hang it up on the wall in her bedroom, somewhere where y'all can see it, living room. And if she had a good day at the daycare, you know, she'll get a smiley face. And if she gets a smiley face, then there'll be some kind of reward in it for her, you know, that day. Because she's so young, you can't really expect her to go a week without a reward because she's only four. So if she had a good day at school, then maybe she'll get to choose dessert for dinner or maybe she'll get to choose dinner. Or maybe you and her will watch, you know, a favorite cartoon together. Remember, with children your daughter's age, they don't need money and they don't need objects. They need time. Attention is the most important thing you can give a child under the age of 10. Unfortunately, we're so materialistic as black people that the first thing we think of when it comes to rewarding kids, even young children, is expensive toys, Air Jordans, clothes. They don't want that stuff. Children want attention. And we should not introduce money and materialism into children's lives that young when all they need is attention. But I think y'all got to work on, you know, working on getting her to be not so spoiled. I think y'all also might need to practice leaving her, taking her places, maybe to your mom's house, your sister's house, your friend's house, and leaving her there for like an hour or two so she can understand that you're going to have to learn how to not be around mom and dad all the time. So y'all might have to work with her a little more because I don't think y'all really prepared her for life without y'all. I think that's is the um, reason that she's been around um, my mom and you know her dad and me and her brother. Cause she, the daycare says that she keeps saying mommy, daddy, and her brother. Exactly. She's um, missing y'all because she's not used to being away from y'all, and she really wasn't prepared. You know, if she would have been prepared, you know, as I said, being taken different places and left there for a little bit amount of time you know, per per day, she could have built up that discipline to be separate from you, you see. But y'all didn't really prepare her, so she's kind of traumatized by it all. And so now you have to train her now. And I think y'all going to have to do that, not just by taking her to school, but also taking her other places as well. But I also think the reward system will go a long way to smoothing this out because she knows she's able to perform well when you guys leave her at school, then there'll be a reward for her later. I think that'll motivate her to do a little bit better. Okay, thank you so much. It's been a um, help. I just, I'm gonna take in everything you told me and I'm gonna work with her this week and next week and I'll keep in touch with you on her progress. Yeah, hey, I got four kids. My oldest three graduated. I have a middle schooler who's not wanting to go back to eighth grade. He would rather join the workforce now and is tired of learning. I tell him this is unrealistic, but the thought of school has been causing stress and anxiety for the last three years. He's only 13, but he's appealingly looks stressed and angry all day, especially as school approaches. He hasn't engaged in self-harm, but I expect that to be next. Very bright kid. Never gotten anything but A's. Okay, the teacher constantly says he's at the top of the class. I asked if he want to skip the high school, but he completely turned off. Well, my dear sister Sharon, he cannot afford to get turned off because he's not going to be able to do anything in life without a high school diploma. If the problem is that the work is too easy, get him evaluated for mental giftedness. Pennsylvania still has a mentally gifted law, so your son can still be evaluated for mental giftedness. Make sure this is not a family issue. I don't know what the dynamic is with dad. I don't know what the relationship dynamic is with you. Uh, I don't know if this is a self-esteem issue involving siblings or peers. Uh, if he doesn't like the school he's at, consider a charter school. Consider one of the special admission high achieving public schools in the school district of Philadelphia. But there's no such thing as discontinuing education in the eighth grade. Now, there is the possibility that he could take the GED right now 
And if he aces the GED right now, he can get a GED and go straight to trade school or straight to college. He could do that. So does he want to get the GED? But I'm not so sure if I want my eighth grader entering the life of work and entering the real world at 13 years old. I don't even think I want my 13 year old going off to college. So I think we need to find out what the real issue is and get that young man back into school. That's what I'm thinking there, Sister Sharon. I hope that helps. If we need to find him a therapist, I can text you a referral number for the Association of Black Psychologists so you can find somebody for him to talk to. A proud mother of three boys, two girls, I'm married, husband travels, oldest son 17, lacks motivation, unless it's anime. Do you know of any organization in Maryland that caters to young men for something like that? I don't, but we can look for it. I know there was a big anime conference that just took place. Where was I at? I was just in a city that has an annual anime conference. This is what I would do if I were you. I would promise my son that I would take him to an annual anime conference if he achieves commensurate with my expectations for that school year. That could be a reward that he can earn at the end of the year. He must pass all classes with a B minus or higher and he can go to the annual anime conference of his choosing as long as I can afford it. But what you're dealing with is lazy Negro syndrome. That's what this is. This is a spoiled boy who does what he wants, only wants to play video games or anime. Daddy's not there to enforce the discipline and mommy might be letting him get away with murder. We got to get the discipline together. But more importantly, when is daddy coming home and how often is daddy in the home? OK, Dr. Umar, my son is five, just started kindergarten. I'm a single mom. My son's teacher called me in for a meeting today, day two of school, discuss behavior. She says he's very respectful and sweet, doesn't like to sit at his desk or sit on the rug. He prefers to play with classroom toys all day. In my opinion, my son obviously needs to adapt to the structure. His teacher wants him to have a group session with the school counselor once a week. I'm fearful they will try to self-diagnose. No, couple things. Number one, did we prepare him for public school by making him sit still at home in the chair five minutes at a time, 10 minutes at a time? 15 minutes at a time. Let me say this to all black parents raising black boys. Let me say this to all black parents with preschool age black boys. You have to prepare them to function in the classroom. These snow bunny teachers don't care to do it. And if your son can't sit still for 10 or 15 minutes at a time, they're going to try to force ADHD, medication, or special ed on you. So I think one of the problems here, we didn't prepare him for school. The first time he's been expected to sit down and listen without touching anything is in this classroom. So part of this is our fault. That's number one. Number two, you might have to hire a psychologist to observe your son in that classroom. She's complaining on day two. I have a problem with day two complaints. I have a problem with day two complaints. I have a problem with a teacher that's already complaining on day two. That sounds like an inflexible teacher who's very rigid and has very little student skills. That's what it sounds. Very little, very poor social communication skills with her children. Day two, that's a bit much. So you might got to start finding you a black psychologist or behavior specialist to go into your son's classroom and observe him in the classroom. Because we don't know what's going on in that classroom. How do we know all the children aren't doing the same thing? How do we know she's not singling your son out? 
Are these children mostly black? Are they mostly white? Is your son one of one in a sea full of white children? What is the environmental dynamics of this classroom? Because if your son is one of the only black boys in it, this is a clear sign that we are headed for the criminalization of your son. Okay? So you got to give me a little bit more information on this situation. Is, there, is this a potential racial profiling? Is your son being racially profiled? Is your son simply have never been taught discipline? Is your son spoiled? Is he used to doing whatever the hell he want to do when he wants to do it? There's a lot of things we got to look at here. And I need you to be honest about it. But my biggest takeaway for black children, for black parents, is we got to get our sons ready for kindergarten. We can't have them doing what they want for five years. And then they go into a class where they've never been expected to sit still for 15 minutes. I'm going to be honest. And I don't defend Snow Bunny teachers. But... They have a point. They have a point. If your son ain't got no discipline at all, ain't been taught no discipline, and you just drop them off at kindergarten at a public school, that's not fair to the teacher. So I'm just keeping it a buck. Six-year-old boy going to first grade, IEP for speech in DD, developmental delay, behavior at school out of control, throwing chairs. Oh, hell no. I'm calling you, Tina. Tina, we got to talk, Tina. Uh-uh. Tina, his ass will be in prison. Tina? Hello. Sister Tina, how you doing, beautiful? Now, tell me what's going on with your son. He's throwing chairs. To, what, what's going on? Yeah. Um, what grade he in? What grade he in this year? This year he'll be in first. He'll be in the first grade. So, in kindergarten, he was throwing chairs. Yes. What else was he doing? Issue. Um, they would call us, me and the husband, to go pick him up just because, you know, the behavior was out of control. You know, saying no, um, staying out, you know, at the playground after it was time to come in. And the only classification he has is speech. No, speech and developmental delay. Well, developmental delay is generic. Developmental delay for what do they think he might have? What is the, wh where is he developmentally delayed? In what area? Um, that. And how old is he now? He's six. He's six. Because if memory serves me correctly, they will no longer be able to use developmental delay beyond his eighth birthday. So they're either going to have to drop it or call it something else. Right, yes. Um, He's not intellectually well, disabled, right? No. So tell me about the throwing chairs. Is he spoiled? Is he used to just doing what he want to do? I think that that's something... Y'all got to get that because because y'all got to get that. Let me explain something. Having an IEP does protect the child behaviorally because they cannot be suspended beyond 10 days for behaviors that are related to the disability. But guess what's not covered in that protection? Weapons, drugs, and serious bodily injury. Your son throwing that chair, that is considered a weapon and it can cause serious bodily injury. So his IEP will not save him if he keeps that behavior up. He can get arrested. Yeah. So y'all yeah. gotta, y'all gotta. I, I, I think th is this a spoiled thing? It might be. Y'all gotta get on it. He doesn't act like that at home. Like with being his dad, he doesn't. Let me ask you this: no chairs. He doesn't elope. What were the consequences at home when y'all learned that he was throwing chairs? Um, you know, dad spanked him. We we took away. You know, no outside, no. TV, uh, making him, you know, clean up after himself. See, let me tell you what's going to happen. doesn't understand it. If he does that again, after the 10th day of suspension, because special ed kids can only be suspended 10 days. After the 10th day, if they want to suspend him again, or if they want to expel him from the school, they have to conduct what's called a manifestation determination which is a fancy way of answering two questions. Number one, 
Is the child's behavior related to the disability? Your son is only classified with a speech problem and a developmental delay. Throwing chairs cannot be explained by speech impairment and developmental delay. So he's not going to get that question. And the second question is whether the IEP was developed and implemented effectively. And I don't think we're going to win there either. Now, I will say this. If your son exhibits a pattern of behavior problems, the IEP team has to develop a functional behavioral assessment and positive behavior plan for your son. Have they done that yet? Yes. Have y'all been called yes. in? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if, VIP, yeah. Well, if he's still throwing chairs, then the behavior plan is not effective, which means there needs to be another meeting to revise it. The behavior plan is not a one and done. You keep redoing it until the behavior is gone. So if y'all did a behavior plan, he's still throwing chairs. The behavior plan is not effective. Right. Now, let me ask you this. Is it possible that how bad is his speech problem? Is it so bad that people can't understand him and he's frustrated and that's why he's throwing chairs or that ain't it? Um, I think that's a part of it. He's, he's getting outside speech therapy and he gets speech to the school. He He's he's vocal and he can have a conversation, but you, you can tell he's it's just a little delay in the speech area. Like he can't, you know, get out, you know, what he's telling all the time. I need y'all to set up a behavior plan with him. Get you a calendar and have the teacher let y'all know how he do every day. Let him know there's going to be rewards at the end of the day. He's young, so you can reward him every day. Don't use money. Don't use toys. Don't use expensive gifts. Children want your time. You have a good day at school. We get to watch a movie together before you go to bed. You had a good day at school. We're going to go to the zoo on Saturday. You had a good day at school. We're going, we're going to pop some popcorn together. It should be activities. Activities and time for children at young. Put him on a behavior plan. Let him know what the rewards are going to be. Let him know what the punishments are going to be, too. And let's see if we can motivate him out of that. I also think I might want to consider hiring a psychologist to go into the classroom and observe the behavior to see if it is as bad as it's being reported and or also to see if he's being triggered by the teacher or other students. I think there's more going on than what we're being told if he's throwing chairs. I think there's far more going on unless he's just that out of control, but I think there might be some other triggers being pushed in that class that the teacher isn't telling us about. Yeah. You might got to hire somebody to go in there and, and take a look because until you have another set of eyes in that class, you will never know what's really happening. That's why I always tell parents before you start doing too much, hire a psychologist or behavior specialist to go into that classroom. I also think it wouldn't be a bad idea to get him a couple sessions of therapy by a private psychologist just to see if there's anything going on that needs to be addressed in his thinking, in his emotions, because that it sounds a bit much. Yeah, because I, you know, I asked him actually today, I was like, are you ready to go back to school? And he said, you know, he said no. And I asked him why. And he said, because the work is hard. The work is hard. He's going to kindergarten? No, first grade, right? First grade. Mm -hmm. Is the work hard? He, he can read. He, he knows math. Or is he? Is he? Is he just? Is he spoiled? This could just be a spoiled problem. He just want to do what the hell he want to do when he want to do it. And if that's what it is, I got to break him out of that. Yeah, that's what's going on. Yeah, I got to break him out of that. Cause uh, if he keeps that up, they're going to try to force you to have him reevaluated for emotional disturbance. And you don't want your son classified with an emotional disturbance. But that's what's going to happen if this doesn't stop. But hold their feet to the fire. I would tell them we got to sit down and come up with another behavior plan. Guess what else your son can get? He can get a one-to-one -one aid. He has an IEP. Y'all might need to bring up a one-to-one -one aid. They're not going to want to do it. But guess what? They don't have a choice. If he needs a one-to-one -one aid to stay focused in the classroom, they got to pay for it. That is the law. Yeah, he had a, well, I guess it was just like a teacher aide in the room, but he was, I didn't have to Okay, know. but I'm ta I ain't talking exactly. about the teacher's aide. I'm talking about a one-to-one -one aide that goes where he goes. He won't get it all day, but in the, during the times that he's most likely to go off task, he should probably have that one-to-one -one aide until y'all get his behavior under control. Mm-hmm. 
I would I I would call an IEP meeting and demand the one to one the one on one eight. That's what I would. He he's entitled to it. Yeah. Question: Did your son ever witness any trauma in the house, any domestic violence, or anything? No. And he's never been emotionally or physically traumatized. No. Okay. To me, it sounds like he's spoiled. That's that. That's that would be the simplest explanation, or there's something else going on beneath the surface that I don't know about. Yeah, I have a feeling it may be something else because in pre-K, you know, for the three-year-olds. The teacher did want to give him that autism um, classification, but we... Oh, Lord. Um, Stay away from that. Him. He was too young. He ain't no damn autism. He throwing chairs. <laughs> I mean, he, 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 he socializes with the other kids, right? He is. So he's not... Aut if he's, now, if you tell me he don't communicate with the other kids, he shies away from them, he prefers to do his own thing, now, that's more like autism. But if he playing with other kids and communicate with other kids, how is he autistic? Autism is a communications impairment, a neurologically based communications impairment. How is he autistic? Right. But yeah, the behavior is autism. Yeah. I think they're, you know, on the behaviors which have been out of control this past year. Okay. Well, think about what I talked about. And if we need to do a private consult, just let me know. Shoot me a text. Okay. I will. I okay, Queen. It. No problem. Have a good evening. Me too. All right. Thank you.